Our next speaker will be Jakob Schnell, and he will be talking about automated spell checking. All right. Okay, please welcome Jakob. Perfect. Hello, everybody. My name is Jakob. Some of you might know me by my nickname, uh, Kubi. I am a maths and computer science student currently on an Erasmus year in uh, Milan in Italy, but uh, originally studying at the University of Heidelberg. This is my first talk at any uh, DjangoCon or PyCon or whatsoever. Um, so I thought, uh, as an introduction, it might be fair uh, to just uh, have a few words about why I am here. And it all starts uh, back in October last year. I was sitting in a database class, I think, and uh, compared to Katie's talk from earlier, it was boring, at least to me. And so I decided to do something uh, worthy of my time. And a friend of me, uh, Raphael, that has just introduced me, has a project called Pretix that you might know that you all bought your ticket from. And so I decided to start hacking uh, on Pretix. And I fired up the, uh, the program. And after a few seconds, I discovered a typo somewhere in the code. And I was like, wow, great, cool. I can just search for this wrong word, and I can fix it, and I can submit a PR, and it will be great, and I will be doing something useful, and I will be doing good stuff with my time. Um, and so I did that, and that worked fairly well. And then I figured maybe there are more typos than just this one. And so I fired up a spell checker, I think a spell. Um, and spoiler alert, there were more typos. And so I fixed them all, or all of them I could find. And uh, I asked whether maybe automated spell checking would be something that Pretix would like or that the uh, Django world could use. And uh, Raphael's answer was, yes, of course, please do so. And now you might be wondering, well, but I am typing my text and I'm typing uh, good and perfectly. And here are some examples of uh, wrong words uh, that, that, that were fixed uh, that are to be found in uh, or that were found in the Pretext project. Um, and I think uh, since all the text that we write is written by us, by humans, uh, we can all agree on the fact that it will contain errors. And a friend of mine even goes as far as saying, whenever you publish anything, be it a book or a thesis or an article or whatsoever, once it is published, once you handed it in, you can open your thesis, your book, at whatever page, and the first thing you will find is a typo. And this will never change. Oh, yeah, the audience agrees with me. Cool. <laughs> and um, for most of these typos, it's not too bad, because most of us are just so used to a reading all the time um, that they will just skip those typos. Um, but if you're not an English native speaker or if you have trouble with the language uh, altogether, then you might stumble uh, across some of these typos. And uh, every now and then, there might be typos that uh, wouldn't even be uh, well, let's say code of conduct compliant. Uh, for example, I encountered a typo in the word account, where the second C and the O were switched. Um, and that's why it's not on the slide. And uh, yes, so obviously we need uh, spell checking because we, ca we can't find those errors all by ourselves. Um, some of them will slip past us, and computers are just better at doing so. In general, there are uh, two places where uh, we need spell checking in a Django project. Uh, one, first, is the documentation, and the second is the code itself or the uh, user interface that we provide. And uh, the code is the much more complicated part, and I'll come to that uh, in about five minutes, I think. Um, so I first uh, want to talk about uh, documentation. For documentation, spell checking is rather easy. That is because, A, um, all of your documentation is usually in one place, right? You have one, or, uh, one folder called docs, and it contains 
all of your all of your documentation. It's usually large text files that are easily um, checkable. Uh, usually, you only provide documentation in one language, so you only need one spell checker for that language. And uh, in the Python world, documentation is sorry usually done uh, with uh, Sphinx, with the Sphinx uh, project package, whatever. Um, and for Sphinx, uh, f fortunately, uh, spell checking already does exist, uh, and it's. Uh, a package called sphinxcontrib.spelling. And uh, the usage is, uh, it was written by Dak Hellman, the usage is quite simple. Uh, you fire up sphinx-build um, with the directive, oh nice, I can look up here, not there. Um, you fire it up via sphinx-build-bspelling, then you put all your other options that you need, and then you specify in what folder your, your output should, should be, and usually that will be something like underscore build slash spelling. The requirements are fairly easy. Uh, you can just install Sphinx Contrib minus spelling uh, via pip, and it needs PyEnchant, which I will talk about in a few minutes. Um, so those are readily available. You can just add those two lines to your uh, requirements.txt file or whatever. Um, if you are using Travis, you can easily implement uh, the Sphinx build thingy um, by just adding uh, the enchant package that is needed for PyEnchant uh, in your uh, Travis setup, and you can generally easily integrate it into your um, CI by just checking whether after the build is done, um, the file output.txt in the directory underscore build slash spelling does exist. And if it does, then you have some errors, and you should go fix them. And if it does not, then everything is fine, and you can just move on. So this is, uh, this is fairly straightforward. This is nice. It works uh, just fine. It has been working for Pretix for uh, I don't know, let's say four or five months now, and it's great. Uh, it needs a bit of configuration, of course. Uh, first of all, your uh, Sphinx config in conf.py uh, needs to uh, have Sphinx spelling as an extension. Then you should specify a spelling language, uh, which I guess will be en underscore us for most of our applications. Um, since your application will probably contain some words that are valid for your application, but not for the English language in general, for example, in the Pretix project, this is Pretix as a word itself. It will obviously uh, come up in the documentation, but it is not a word to be found in an English uh, dictionary, I think. Um, you, you need a so-called word list that just lists all these words that are not found anywhere in, uh, in a dictionary, but in your documentation, and that are correctly spelled. And you can just specify a word list um, via the spelling underscore word underscore list underscore file name directive. Um, and if you want, you can ask the Sphinx contrib dot spelling to show suggestions for things that you misspelled, uh, which makes it even easier for you to fix all those spellings. And this is easy and nice and uh, works great. For code, everything gets a little bit more complicated. Um, this is because, in general, wherever you interact, the, the second part where you interact with your users, apart from documentation or manuals or handbooks or whatsoever, uh, is your user interface, either uh, usually in, in some kind of uh, graphical user interface or text user interface. And actually, most GUIs contain a lot of text. Um, and if you want to fix all the errors that are there, then you would have to uh, parse uh, Python code, you would have to parse HTML code, you'd have to parse uh, CSS probably, and extract all the strings, and then it's unclear what strings should be translated and what strings shouldn't be translated. And uh, to be fair, I have no clue on how you would do this. Um, but there is one thing that makes it very, very easy for us as a developer to indeed check all those strings, and that thing is translation. Once your project scales beyond a certain point, um, you probably want to translate it in another language. For example, for myself, I am German, so uh, English is not my, uh, my mother tongue. So I would probably develop my application in English, since it should be accessible to more than just the German and German-speaking population. Um, but I would probably want uh, to have a German translation, because it is easier for me and for my, probably for my use cases to work um, with the product. It is easier for me to sell it to other people, and um, so I want that translation. Even if you are an English native speaker, 
then you might still want translation because you want uh, to sell your product to other people. You might want to translate it into Spanish, which is, a, which is a language that many, many people speak. And once we have translation, it makes it quite easy for us to automate our uh, spell checking um, because translation gathers all those uh, strings and there, are, uh, there is a, a system that does this for us that I will present in a minute. Um, and since we now have all of our strings gathered in one place, we can check them for spelling errors rather easily. And basically what uh, the project I want to present to you today is, is uh, it combines uh, the PO library for translation and PyEnchant for spell checking into one program called uh, PoTypo. And of course, it's not just those two components, but it's also a lot of sweat and tears and uh, work and glue code wrapped around uh, stuff to bring this all together. So let's talk about the two components uh, that go together. The first uh, is GetText. GetText is a uh, localization and internationalization uh, system that is, I think, the standard for uh, translation, for internationalization, for localization um, of things that handle text. And it is based on so-called uh, .po files. This is an example of uh, such a uh, file. It has some metadata in the top, like uh, the creation date, the date of the last revision, um, whoever was the last translator, and most importantly, what language we are translating into in the language tag that is written up there, and then some more metadata in the top. Uh, and then it has a, a bunch of entries that all basically look like the last three lines here. Um, the first is where, do, where does uh, this text appear in my project, for example, in this sample PO file, a .po file, the first uh, message would appear in the file djangocon slash talks slash intro.py in line one. And uh, every uh, entry has a message ID that is the string that is uh, there in your code, which would be hello djangocon, I am so happy to be here, I truly am. Um, and the second would be the message uh, string, which is the translation of that code into the language that is given above. And the usage of this system in general is uh, fairly simple as well. Um, you can just uh, import pget text and uget text uh, from django.utils.translation, not t9n, but otherwise it wouldn't fit. Um, and you would, for example, have the, the two statements, um, print underscore bra uh, open brackets, my name is name, closing brackets. Um, and the underscore is then the call to uget text. And you would have, for example, a call like print pget text, sorbac sizes, venti. And if you now let uh, GetText do its thing on uh, the files and gather all those message IDs for you, then this would uh, render as uh, something like the following .po file. Um, you see, we have the file djangocon slash talks slash potypo.py. And in the third line, we have the my name is name in curly brackets um, message ID. And uh, the comment that we gave before this, which is leave name as is, the code will handle it, uh, gets automatically drawn into uh, the .po file. Um, it adds that this is uh, the Python brace format, which is a, a thing that tells uh, get text that this is uh, special or the thing in curly brackets is special. It shouldn't handle this. Uh, and you can add a message string or a translation for this. In German, this would be ich heiße name. Um, and what the pgetText thing does is uh, the first string is a context for your application. Um, so usually uh, a translator wouldn't, would, n I, don't, I don't think you would be able to handle the word venti, but once you add the context, oh, it's about Starbucks sizes, um, then of course the translation, or the, the meaning is large and it translates to groß in German. Um, so this is uh, fairly easy, uh, or fairly, fairly simple to, to handle. We can use the uh, PO library to extract uh, the message IDs and the message strings, and then we can check them separately for errors. And since we have a base language given, uh, we know what our message ID, ID's language is, and uh, since we have a language tag in our .po file, we know what the message string uh, language is, and we can check for errors in both of these. Uh, in both of these languages quite easily. The second part that goes into Potypo is um, PyEnchant. And uh, if you're working with uh, spell checking, then you will probably have encountered some of those words. 
and I will try to give a short overview of on uh, what they are. Um, and it all starts with iSpell, which is a spell checker that is really old. It was written in 1971, if I'm not mistaken. Um, originally for the English language, it works quite well. Even today, it is sort of the de facto standard, but along came UTF-8, and uh, with that, well, iSpell wasn't really able to handle that, so they, uh, so a spell was created. And to this day, I think a spell is the best spell checker for the English language. Um, when the Open Office, Office project came along, they wrote, uh, they, they implemented their own uh, spell checker, my spell, as part of their Abbey word, word processor. Um, and that has worked, that has replaced a spell as a spell checker in Open Office. And um, later, uh, Hanspell was developed originally for the Hungarian language. Um, and it has by now replaced my spell as a spell checker. And uh, from my point of view, a spell is the spell checker that you want if you uh, spell check English text, and a hand spell is the spell checker that you want to use whenever you check other European languages. And for non European languages, I'm very sorry, but I have no idea. I don't encounter them frequently. Um, in general, this, uh, the, the, uh, those, this mass of spell checkers uh, produces kind of a problem um, because we would have to implement them all or we would have to handle them all and they all work sort of the same because they all take text and then they tell you what is wrong in the text, but they also all work sort of differently. And that is why uh, the Enchant project exists. Um, the LibEnchant is a library that wraps all of those uh, spell checkers and uh, provides you as a developer an API uh, with which you can easily check all the things. And it handles all the specifications of the spell checkers for you. And even if they don't implement some functionality, but others do, uh, Enchant will try to emulate the, the functionality that other spell checkers have for you. And it is very convenient um, as a developer to just have an, uh, one, one framework that you need to know and you don't need to uh, interface with a spell or in hand spell or uh, finish spell checkers or h spell for the hebrew language or whatnot there is a list on wikipedia go look it up it's uh, huge and um there exists a pie enchant um written by ryan kelly which is uh, currently unfortunately unmaintained um which wraps uh, the lib enchant and gives you python bindings so it's quite nice to interface uh, with pie enchant all right, these are uh, the two main components that go into uh, Potypo. And I will now talk about uh, how you would use uh, Potypo in your project and uh, how you would set this up. But first, I will have a short drink with some water somewhere here. Uh, the usage is uh, the usage of uh, Potypo is uh, fairly simple. Uh, you just fire up uh, Potypo in your directory where your um, setup that CFG lives. I will talk about this in a second. Um, the requirements are, are fairly simple. Uh, Potypo itself is installable via pip install Potypo, and um, you of course need uh, PyEnchant and maybe the PO library as a um, as requirements for Potypo, uh, but if you use translation, you have the, uh, the PO library installed anyways. Um, you will then have uh, to have packages for every language that you want to uh, check your spelling in. Um, so for a German and English project, you would install something like uh, a spell minus en for English dictionaries for a spell, and you would install something like my spell minus de minus de for dictionaries for the German language. Or actually, you would install Hanspell, but I haven't checked whether Hanspell is as good as my spell. It should be, but I don't know. Um, so again, it is fairly easy. Uh, it is fairly easy to use. And uh, the configuration is um, compliant with uh, the setup.cfg file format. Um, so you have one, one part where you configure Potypo in your setup.cfg, where you also configure Flake 8 and other 
Django and Python thingies. And you first, of course, uh, specify a default language, which is the language that everything will be translated uh, from. So it's basically the language of your uh, message IDs in your .po file. Then you specify where your local, uh, where your .po files live. Usually they will live in a uh, locales directory like django-project slash locale or somewhere. Um, and uh, Potypo handles uh, the finding of all those uh, .po files by itself. Um, currently it just assumes that you follow uh, the structure that is uh, given uh, in the left that I will explain in a second, um, but it may add some magic to find your .po files automatically. Then, of course, you can specify languages for which you do not want uh, Potypo to, to fail or to report any errors. For example, if you are just in the process of translating your application into Danish, then you might, of course, want uh, Potypo to report what uh, errors there are in the translation into Danish, but you do not want these errors to, uh, to break your continuous integration process or to break your Travis build. And this is why the nofail directive exists. And then, of course, as before, we need a word list for words that are present in our application that are not present in an English dictionary. And you have basically two ways of uh, handling these, of implementing this. Um, the first is you can put them all in a word list directory. If you do so, you should specify the uh, wl underscore dir variable, and you should give the directory that uh, your word lists live in. And if you have that, uh, then they should be named language tag dot txt, which is the example on the right here. You would have uh, an, in your Django project, you would have a folder word list, and then, then for every language, you would have a file de.txt, en.txt, and so on and so forth. If you don't like this, um, then you can also put them in various uh, places in the uh, locales di directory. And usually in your locales directory, you have one directory for every language that you're translating into, one directory for Danish, one tri uh, directory uh, for German, and so on and so forth. And in those directories, you have a um, directory lc underscore messages, and in that directory live your .po files. And you can just put your word list .txt, in this case called word list .txt, in this uh, lc messages folder, or in the folder above, in the folder for German or for Danish or for whatsoever. And for your base language, for your default language, uh, you would just put a file called word list .txt into your into your locale folder. Those are the two uh, ways that word lists are currently handled. Uh, if you have any other ideas or if you think, wow, this is uh, not as nice as I wanted, I want this another way, um, please come talk to me and we can figure something out. But for now, this uh, works quite well. Now, there are a few exceptions to simply uh, using word lists or to just uh, spell checking. Um, and the first are what I call edge case words. And these are words that uh, contain punctuation um, or that contain a mix of uh, numbers and letters. Um, this is because of the way that a uh, PyEnchant works. It basically uh, splits your text by white space and then strips punctuation from your text. And so the word add-ons would be split into a part add and a part ons. And, uh, well, add is an English word, ons is not, or not really. And it would report an error for that. Uh, or, for example, for uh, the for translate.pretix.eu, it would uh, report an error because it would split it uh, into translate, pretix, and eu, and it probably won't be able uh, to handle those. And so all those words that contain punctuation, all the words that contain a mix of uh, numbers and letters, like, for example, 214th, which is a part of an address, I think, um, you can specify them, and uh, then it will just uh, skip those words across all of your text. And uh, you would not want to add them to your word list because, again, they are not uh, the the parts. The single parts are not really words. MT940 is not really an English word, so you would not want it in your in your English word list. Um, but it's correct; it should be spelled that way. And so we just tell uh, Potypo, please skip this word. And the next thing that is um, 
somewhat different is what I called phrases. And a phrase is uh, something that is present in your text, although it doesn't technically belong. For example, ticketing powered by uh, is a text that might be used in a German application. And German people probably would understand it, because a ticket in uh, English is a ticket in German, so ticketing works. And powered by, well, by and the German word by are quite, quite similar, and also powered would be understandable. So you can, uh, you can use the phrase ticketing powered by in a German, uh, in a German text. But the, neither the word ticketing, nor the word powered, nor the word by are German words. Uh, so you would, have to, you would have to put them in your word list if you do not want them uh, to pop up as errors. Which is bad, because by might be a misspelling of the German word by, which is written B-E-I, um, because you are typing English and German parallel. And so you want this to be an error, but you do not want the phrase ticketing powered by, by itself, uh, to be an error. Um, so this is also handled by uh, phrases. Um, those are um, the, two, the two main things that uh, you have to filter out um, when you are checking for your code. If you encounter any other things where uh, neither edge case words nor phrases are enough for you to spell check your application in the way that you want to, um, I'm very happy to, to see more edge cases and to find a way to work around them. And then last but not least, uh, you might uh, have some HTML uh, code in your, in your code somewhere that will be uh, chunked out by an HTML chunker, which is provided by the Enchant project. And then you have some filters that filter uh, the Python brace format from before, or that filter URLs, or that filter HTML from, uh, from your code. And those are, are fairly easy to use. You might uh, write your own. It's, it's quite nice. And this is uh, the complete feature set of PoTypo to this point. Um, the project is, uh, is not that old. Um, it's quite new. It's a uh, still working project, uh, work in progress. Um, but it is uh, already used in one application, which is uh, Pretix. Uh, once Raphael is done organizing this conference and gets around merging pull requests, um, which I totally cannot blame him for. Um, if you have any wishes on features that you think you might use, if you want to use this project, um, you are very welcome to open issues, and we can discuss about it. Um, if you think, oh, wow, this is something that I can use, then please do so. Um, please come to me. Please talk to me. Um, I will uh, very gladly help you uh, set all of this up. Um, as I said, this is still work in progress. There might be things um, that change. This is um, my, my uh, contact information, also where you can find the slides and the GitHub repository. And before I finish, I want to thank uh, three entities. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, Raphael for his uh, many, many times that he has provided help uh, for me whilst going through the process of writing a Python project and publishing it and so on and so forth. He has been uh, super, super helpful and is, in general, an awesome person. Um, second, I would like to thank uh, Matthias Vogelgesang for the uh, Metropolis Beamer theme that I have used to create this uh, presentation. And third, uh, I want to thank you, as my audience, uh, for your time and for your attention. Uh, if you have any feedback, please go to uh, the pre-talk system, click on this talk to the schedule, click on this talk, and give me some feedback. And if you have questions, please go. Thank you. Okay, we've got a question at the microphone in the middle. Hello, um, I have one question regarding the documentation. Do you have actually an exa example of what kind of documentation we can um, validate and run uh, the library to, to spell, uh, to run the spell checking? Um, I don't know if I got your question right, but uh, any, any kind of documentation basically that is uh, that is using Sphinx to document its stuff. You can uh, use the Sphinx contrib dot spelling uh, project to to spell check your documentation. Does this answer your question? Yeah, kind of. Okay. And another one is you showed actually how to um, spell check the strings representation that we show to the user. Uh, can we use this on the specific code pieces? Um, 
Um, as I said, uh, if you do not have translation, so if your all of the strings that should be spell checked are scattered throughout your project in Python files and HTML files and CSS files, um, then I don't know on how to how to spell check those. If you want to uh, use to, to translate your project into any other languages, then you would probably use uh, the get text system, and in that case, you have a .po file, and you can use potypo to spell check. But in the other case, unfortunately, I have no idea on how to do this. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next question from the microphone on the back. Yeah, so thank you for the talk and uh, for the project, um, as my spelling is notoriously bad um, and one of the biggest source of frustrations for my reviewers. I think I will have plenty of need for that. But one of the things I'm a bit unclear is doc strings. Um, so if you use it for automated documentation of your code, um, clearly all your class names, your function names, all this stuff um, is not spelled according to regular syntax rules. Would I have to maintain all these things in the edge case um, list, or is there a different procedure to handle doc strings and function names and class names and the weird spelling? Um, well, class names and uh, function names are spelled correctly by default, I would say, um, because you, you really can't, cannot, cannot, I don't know, spell, spell them wrong. If you, if you know what I mean, because... But for example, one, one of the projects I had, I had the misfortune to name the controller with one L, which is quite annoying. And, of course, this was something that was not just a mistake I made when naming the class, but all, in all the documentation that I wrote referring to this very class. So, obviously, once spotted, it's easy to rectify, but it would... So, how would I, how would I approach this particular problem? Okay. Um, the things contrib dot uh, spelling uh, project does not uh, check. It only checks for uh, errors in the prose that you write to document your process, and not in function names or anything else. If it if you use the word controller, for example, with only one L in prose to refer to a controller, then it will of course tell you this is wrong. But it doesn't check uh, function names or uh, I don't know methods or whatever. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful. If we don't have any further questions, thank you very much, Jakob, for the talk. Thank you.